Pinecone fish glow? Hi, what's going on friends? My name is Brandon and welcome to Nature Meets Paper, the place where we go on an adventure to discover the world of marine biology. I love sharing my experiences with aquatic animals with you through science, stories, and art. It's my goal to raise awareness of our beautiful bodies of water and the creatures that live in them. Please stick around to the very end to hear about this month's charity opportunity. Today we're going to be discovering the Indo-Pacific tropical waters of the pinecone fish. Are you ready? Let's dive in. I will be talking about pinecone fishes in general and Japanese pinecone fish. Monocentris japonica, and monocentris is Greek for one spike, which is weird because it has many spikes. It is also known as the pineapple fish and the night fish. Night with a K. It looks like it's related to boxfish, cowfish, and pufferfish, but it is a member of the order Bursiformes. That means it's related to soldierfish, lanternfish, torchfish, and wolf fangfish. That sounds like a band of characters from Dungeons and Dragons. Except the new player let the dice decide the name for the pinecone fish or pineapple fish. Where can we find the Japanese pinecone fish? I would have guessed a Japanese forested pond, but that isn't the case. They are the most widely spread tropical fish of the four species. They are found in tropical and subtropical Indo-West Pacific Ocean. They range from the Red Sea, South Africa, Mauritius, Southern Japan, Sumatra, Bali, Strait of Timor, and south to the north coast of Australia and New Zealand. They prefer habitat from 20 to 250 meters deep or 820 feet deep. They like sea caves, coral reefs, rocky reefs, under ledges, and hard pack floor zones. They are nocturnal and love hiding away in schools. How am I going to paint this fish? There's a special feature about this fish that I want to incorporate. I use three steps in my painting process, blocking in, modeling, and detail phase. During blocking in phase, I use big brushes and thin strokes to place color. I move to modeling and set my midtones and darks. I also add my texture to this phase. I use mixing white during this phase to mute my colors. During detail phase, I use small brushes and start using titanium white. The titanium white brightens up my highlights and adds a depth to my painting. I try to go from farthest things to the closest. I go from my midtones to my darks, then back, and finally to my highlights. I do this same process for all of my paintings. Let's move to the next segment of our adventure. Physical appearance and behavior. What are we looking for when identifying the pinecone fish? We are looking for a small, well-armored fish that looks like a pineapple or a pinecone. The Japanese pinecone fish grow up to 8 inches long, but average between 5 and 7. They have a round body shape, like a ball. They gave up maneuverability for armor and protection. They are usually bright yellow or orange with black banding around each scale. I should clarify that they don't have traditional scales like some other fish species. They have scutes. Scutes are dense plates of skin that act like scales. They have similar purposes, but are made of different things. Apparently, these little fish are so tough that other fish will break their teeth on them. If that isn't bad enough, the pinecone fish is covered in little backward-facing spines. They have two dorsal fins, one for aid in swimming, and the other is spines. These spines alternate from left to right for maximum stabbage. If that still doesn't deter an animal from eating it, they have one more defense. And you guessed it, more spines. Their pelvic fins are equipped with long, blade-like spines that lock into place for defense. 
Pinecone fish will sometimes use these spines to wedge themselves into cracks or crevices to avoid predation. Their caudal fin is small and rounded. It can't be too big if they're in tight spots. Just because these fish put up a big barrier doesn't mean they don't let others close. Japanese pinecone fish love schooling. They will be, there will be huge groups of these fish together in caves, under rocks, and ledges. They are mainly nocturnal creatures and spend a majority of their time in dim or dark places. They have a, moder they have a modified lateral line to help navigate in their dark habitat. They have mucus pits on their heads to detect their surroundings and other fish around them. This gives them a sense of their surroundings without being able to see. So you thought they were cool before, right? What if I told you they get better? What if I told you they, they light up? Would that make them better? I think so. They have little windows on their jaws that glow. These windows are filled with symbiotic bacterium that fluoresces and gives a off bioluminescent light. These lights change depending on the time of day. They glow yellow, orange, or red during the day and blue at night. Scientists are not sure what these lights are for. It could be for communication to other fish, it could be to see in front of their faces, or it could just be prey attraction. Let's discover what they eat and how they are doing. So, what is the diet of this little fish? I am not sure. I only found what people feed them in the aquariums. Apparently, they eat little brine shrimp, small fish, and some zooplankton, which might include copepods or krill. I am making a guess, but it looks like they eat small animals. How are the Japanese pinecone fish doing? The IUCN Red List has them listed as least concern. This study was conducted in 2019 and is a recent study. There is no commercial fishery for them, but there is an aquarium trade. People like having this fish in their tanks. Commercial aquariums love having them in tanks for guests to look at. So should you get a Japanese pinecone fish? Unless you have a ton of money and a big tank, no. They are hard to keep in captivity. They are expensive and need huge spaces to roam around. I saw estimates of minimum tank size of 150 gallons or more. These little fish have done a great job at protecting themselves from pred predators and humans. If you want one for your own, the easiest way would to be to buy a pineapple and pretend, or to do an art project and paint a pinecone black and yellow. Let's move to the final section of our adventure. What was my personal encounter with the pinecone fish and how is my painting coming along? Let's start with the painting. I have been bouncing around playing with the background and initial layers of the fish. Once I am happy with the textures and color in this step, I move to detail phase. I use small brushes to add details and focus my painting. The key to realism is good contrast. I start using titanium white in my mixing. I use it sparingly. I want it to be bright but not washed out. This is where the depth comes from. I make sure to not overdo my highlights. I also check my colors on my reference photo often. I ask myself if the color I am using is darker or lighter than my reference photo. Then I adjust it from there. Once I am happy, I go back to the background and add some little finishing touches to tie the subject into the background. So what was my encounter with the Japanese pinecone fish? I was visiting the Odyssey in Scottsdale. Now <laughs> don't worry, there aren't too many more fish experiences from there. Then I will be on to other places. Well, we went down a set of escalators through a shark tank. And that was pretty cool. The first tank we saw to the left was this huge tank filled with all sorts of familiar fish. There was a kelp bass, garibaldi, a rockfish, and some perch. 
but the one that caught my eye was the brilliant yellow and black pine cone fish. I looked at it, said it looked like a pine cone. My friend said it looked like a pineapple. Then I asked, what is it? We went running to the other side to read the signage on the wall. And I can neither confirm nor deny if I ran. All I know is I was at the fish and then I was at the sign. It turned out to be a pine cone fish. I laughed and said I was right. Then I kept reading and found out it was known as a pineapple fish. Then my friend said that she was also right. We laughed and went back to watch the little fish wiggle its way into the shadows. They aren't the most graceful swimmers around. It was a funny experience. I just hope I captured the essence of this quirky and prickly nature of the pinecone fish. There we have it, this painting is finished. What do you think? I think it's a fascinating fish and I even used fluorescent paint to add the real lights on its cheek. I love the patterns and colors of this fish. I love how it turned out and hope you do too. If you would like to subscribe and ring the notification bell, it would help this channel grow. I do my best to post new content every other weekend. This month I am helping people around my community. I'm not donating money, I'm donating time. So it's a different kind of donation. So I just want so much challenge for you this month. So it is to help three people or more in your community. Now whether that's going to grab lunch with them, getting to know them, doing yard work, anything like that counts towards this. I just want to have a whole bunch of people getting out in your community and helping each other. Did you know that I sell the art that I make in these videos? I sell the original, as well as limited and unlimited prints. My originals have glitter, glass bead gel medium, or pearlescence on them to play with real world light. My limited edition also have this as well. My unlimited do not. Now I use Feather and Fox Print Company on Whidbey Island as my printing company. They provide me with museum quality gicle prints and they're really, really high quality. They're wonderful people, I love working with them. They're not a sponsor of this channel, but I just want to be transparent of who I use. If you go in or if you order something, please say hi from me. Thank you so much for watching. Spread love, curiosity, and creativity. I've been Brandon, and I will see you in our next adventure.